Hello friends, sorry for the inconvenience, there was some technical error. So friends, so we are discussing about, uh, you know, the Bachelors of Education b program developed by School of Education launched by Indira Gandhi National Open University from July 2016 session. Uh, this beautiful program, teacher education program that has been developed as per NCTE regulations 2014. NCT has, uh, you know, developed a detailed concept note of the b program and keeping in consideration of the concept note of different courses, theory courses as well as the practical oriented courses, the skill based courses, the pedagogy courses, uh, IGNU. Uh, Indira Gandhi National Open University has developed a beautiful curriculum and that has launched from July 2016 session. And friends, uh, as I was talking earlier, uh, the entire B.A. program, the entire teacher education program, if you will go through uh, different teacher education program, teacher education curriculum, school education curriculum of across the globe of different countries, you will find that uh, uh, most of the curriculum uh, you will find that has developed as per the constructivist approach of teaching learning process. Okay? So, means uh, how to prepare teacher those can take the responsibility of this country and uh, who can understand the pedagogy at the same time the theoretical construct of uh, you know uh, the teacher education program, teacher education curriculum. So, keeping in consideration of the philosophy of constructivist approach you will find that both in theory courses as well as skill oriented courses, uh, you know, uh, uh, the proper, uh, uh, you know, uh, content at the same time, uh, you know, the teachers will get uh, an experience of how they become a good teacher and how, uh, you know, uh, pedagogically they can transact uh, the school content to the students by using suitable teaching learning process, by using, uh, you know, the suitable methods, suitable techniques suitable maxims at the same time by adopting a suitable strategy. So friends, uh, the B8 program that has been developed by IGNO, uh, that is the combination of a theory, practical and skill oriented courses. Further we will discuss that uh, just in a uh, brief overview, we will discuss that what are the theory courses are there and what are the practical and skill oriented courses are there. Because development of teaching skill uh, is the sole aim, is the main aim uh, for developing uh, this program because this program will prepare the teachers uh, who can teach the students further at the secondary level. Okay, so that is why uh, you will find a substantial, uh, you know, weightage and credit of this program is given to different practical and skill oriented courses. So friends, uh, this program prepares teachers to teach at the secondary stage in school education that is a class 9th, 10th, uh, 11th and 12th you can say as per the NEP national policy, uh, national policy of education, uh, national education policy NEP 2020 uh, you will find that now the pedagogical structure of school education that is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system of education. So this is the school education structure, 5 years of foundational education then uh, 3 years of preparatory education, then further 3 years of middle education or a middle uh, class education, middle stage, then uh, 4 years of secondary education. Okay? So that secondary stage of education that caters class 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th. So friends, this program uh, will prepare the teachers, uh, those can take the responsibility of teaching at the secondary stage that is starting from class 9th to class 12th. So let us go forward uh, uh, to discuss the other aspect of this B.Ed program. So just very briefly, very quickly, let me to say uh, that the eligibility of this B.Ed program is at least 50% marks either in the bachelor's degree and or in the master degree in sciences, social sciences, commerce and humanity disciplines. Then further, the second criteria of eligibility that is uh, trained in in-service teachers uh, in elementary education and further the candidates who have completed a NCT recognized teacher education program through phase 2 phase mode. So this is as per the regulation uh, uh, NCT regulation 2014-2014. So the eligibility uh, criteria to uh, induct in this B.Ed program to take admission in the B.Ed program is like this. 
So this is the eligibility. Then further, uh, as per NCTE, uh, IGNU has developed this program. This program is of uh, total uh, credit of this program is of 72. This is a two years program. And uh, the learners, they have to study, they have to earn 36 credits in the first year of this program. Then again, 36 credits in the second year of this program. The duration of this program is of two years. Minimum duration is of two years and maximum duration is of five years. Means one can complete the programs in a maximum time duration of five years. But, but meticulously, if you will uh, you know, pursue your study, conduct your, uh, conduct your study, then uh, you can complete this program in, in the minimum duration that is two years. And uh, I have already said that uh, uh, B8 program uh, offered by IGNU, uh, uh, that is we run this program in one session, uh, that is in January session of every year. Okay. And medium of instruction, we have developed the detailed curriculum, courses of study, self-learning material, and its transaction methodologies both in English as well as in Hindi medium. Okay. In both the medium, we have developed the material. So friends, uh, uh, now let us discuss that uh, what are the different courses, course components that has been kept in the first year of this program and in the second year of this program. As I have already said that this is a 72 credit program, this is a huge program, huge uh, uh, you can say uh, both theory as well as practical oriented courses uh, are included in this program. In first year, uh, now it is visible on your screen, uh, uh, you can observe it, you can watch it. You see, you have to study in the first year of this program, you have to study five core courses uh, that is compulsory in nature and the total credit is of 16. Okay, so that means in five courses, uh, uh, you will find that uh, you know the three courses are of four credit each and another two courses are of two to credit each. So when you will go through the program guide, then you will get detail about that what are the different core courses that has been included in the first year of this program. Then uh, 16 credits you have to study from the uh, core courses that is compulsory in nature. Then content based methodology courses. So you have to study here two courses. So five pedagogy courses or methodology courses that has been kept. This is optional in nature. That is pedagogy of science, pedagogy of social science, pedagogy of Hindi, pedagogy of English, uh, uh, then uh, pedagogy of mathematics. So five pedagogy courses are there. So what you have to do? You have to select any two pedagogy courses. So each course is having two credits, so four credits. So that's why total eight credits you have to study from this category that is content based methodology courses. Then further uh, you have to, uh, you know, uh, this is another component of this program that is workshop. We call it is workshop one because this workshop will be conducted in the first year of this program. So here 12 days face to face rigorous uh, interaction, rigorous discussion on various aspect of teacher education program on various aspect of your B.A. program that will be conducted at the study center level. Okay, so that's why this is compulsory for all the learners, compulsory for all the students. And credit is given for credit to the workshop means 12 days face to face workshop will be at your study center. Then further. EPC 1 and 2 you have to study. These are two small courses that is enhancing professional capacities, enhancing professional capacities. So two courses you have to study that is compulsory in nature. So uh, this is four credits, uh, uh, total four credits you have to study. That means EPC 1 is of two credit and EPC 2 is of two credits. So both the EPC, EPC 1 and 2 you have to study. Uh, in the first year of this program. So here in EPC there will be no tournament examination. So certain practical, certain practical, certain internal practicals will be conducted at your study center. Then further uh, as per the NCTE regulation, as per the B.Ed curriculum. So internship one, one, internship one that has been kept in the first year. So four weeks, that means one month internship you have to uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 you have to do uh, in a school. So if you go through the program guide, then you will get the detail about that uh, what you have to do in the internship. So here you have to go to school and you have to gain experience, the school based experience, what is going on in the schools, in the teaching, you have to engage yourself in teaching learning process. At the same time, uh, you have to engage yourself in different activities which is going on 
in the school. So practical experience, skill based experience you have to, uh, uh, that you have to acquire, that you have to observe, that you have to experience and you have to do in the school. So that is why 4 weeks internship program is also one of the part of B.Ed first year program and uh, that is compulsory in nature you have to the, uh, that caters 4 credits. So accordingly if I, uh, if I will add all the credits that means from core courses, content based methodology courses, workshop 1, EPS 1 and 2 and internship 1, some total it is 36 credits. It means in the first year you have to study 36 credits. Let us come to discuss about second year that what are the different courses you have to study in the second year. Friends, in the second year of B.Ed program, uh, again you have to study 4 core courses, okay. Uh, now it is visible on your screen, you can, you can just go through it. Uh, these 4 core courses are compulsory in nature and you have to study 12 credits from these 4 different courses. Uh, then a second category of courses that is the optional courses. So what you have to do? you have to select one optional course, a group of a pool of optional courses that has been suggested, that has been given, that has been developed in this program. So what you have to do, you have to select only one optional course. I am not going through the detail about the optional courses because uh, today we will discuss one of the uh, first year core course. So that is why I am just giving a brief overview that what are the different course components are there in both the years. So friends in op optional courses you have to study one course in the second year of this program and that is uh, the credit weightage is of 4. Then second workshop 2 is also another face to face component uh, of this program. 12 days workshop that will be conducted at the study center level. Friends in the first year of this program uh, uh, you have to uh, you know pursue workshop 1 that is also 12 days and in second year of this program again you have to pursue workshop 2 that is also 12 days uh, uh, duration, uh, uh, 12 days duration of this program. This is compulsory in nature and credit weightage to workshop 2 is also 4 credit. Then EPC 3 and 4 that you have to study in the second year, uh, 2 credit for EPC enhancing professional capacities 3. Uh, 2 credits and uh, EPC 4 enhancing professional competencies 4 that is of 2 credits. So total 4 credits you have to study. EPC 1 and 2 you have already studied in the first year of this program. So this is compulsory in nature. Then further internship 2 a rigorous uh, school based activities you have to do. You have to go for practice teaching. You have to teach at the schools the pedagogy subject that you have uh, that you have offered and uh, uh, the school principals are, are under the supervision of your mentor, uh, your mentor will observe your teaching learning process, you have to prepare the lesson plan, then accordingly you have to teach in the school, at the same time you have to gain other school based experiences also, you have to acquire skill that a teacher supposed to require to teach the students in the school, okay, to manage the classroom and to transact the curriculum, to transact the school curriculum, okay. So, uh, a holistic uh, uh, you know uh, 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 <coughs> skill based uh, uh, knowledge uh, experiences practices you have to acquire from intens uh, from internship 2 this is of 16 weeks duration that means more or less it is four uh, four months four complete months you have to spend uh, in school in different schools okay uh, this is of 12 credit that means you see total 72 credit is uh, uh, the entire program of the B.Ed out of which 12 credit that has been kept in internship 2 and again 4 credits that has been kept in internship 1. So total uh, if I will include intern the credit of internship 1 and internship 2 that means you have to you have to spend 20 weeks 20 weeks that means 5 months uh, uh, in school uh, to, to engage yourself in teaching learning process to engage yourself in different other activities to gain practical knowledge, practical skill based knowledge uh, what a teacher required uh, uh, you know in the teaching learning process to teach the students. So friends here internship 2 is of 12 credits and uh, internship 1 that you have already studied in the first year is of 4 credits and if I will include all the credits of different components of these courses in second year then the total credit will be 36. So friends this is the course structure, this is the program structure that means the courses that has been included in the first year 
and in the second year of this program that is total 72, 36 credits in the first year and 36 credits in the second year. So friends now let us try to discuss that what are the different courses that has been kept under the core courses that is in B.Ed first year program. You see you have to study, I have already said that you have to study 5 different courses. The course courses are just like BES 1 to 1, Childhood and Growing Up, it is a 4 credit course. BES 1 to 2, Contemporary India and Education is a 4 credit course. BES 1 uh, to 3, uh, Learning and Teaching is a 4 credit course. BES 1 to 4, Language Across the Curriculum, that is also a 2 credit course. And BES 1 to 5, that is Understanding Disciplines and Subjects is a 2 credit course. So, if I will include all these credits, that means under this core courses of first year, you have to you have to study 16 credits, you have to earn 16 credits and you have to study 5 different courses. And friends, today we are going to discuss one of the first year core course that is BES 1 to 2, Contemporary India and Education, it is visible on your screen. So this is a 4 credit course. So now let us try to understand that what are the concept, what are the different content point, what philosophy. Uh, and what concept that has been addressed in the contemporary India and education. Uh, you see friends, uh, uh, we have developed uh, a detailed curriculum of this course. Uh, let me to show. You see, these are the four different blocks. These are the four different blocks that we have developed uh, this course BES 1, 2, 2 contemporary India and education. Uh, you will get the learning material, you will get the self-learning material which is available in our EGAN course and uh, this is also available, the soft copy is also available in IGNO students app. Okay. If you have received the hard copy of the material, you can go through detail about this course and uh, if you have not received, then you can uh, download the course material from EGAN course. Uh, uh, sites okay that is in IGNU website in the portal of EGAN course. So friends let us go forward uh, to discuss about the objectives of this course that is BES 1 to 2. First of all uh, let me to say that uh, uh, this course uh, provide you a detailed understanding, uh, a detailed context and detailed perspective of education, perspective of education because you see BA is a teacher education program and to be a teacher to be a teacher one should understand the theoretical construct of education as a discipline first and further how to practice, how to practice and how to acquire the skills to transact school curriculum to the students to, to prepare themselves to be a very good teacher. So that is why I have already said that the curriculum uh, of this B.Ed curriculum that has been developed as per uh, you can say the multidisciplinary aspect, uh, 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 multidisciplinary concept as per the interdisciplinary concept at the same time you will find that uh, this is a mixer, this is a mix of uh, you know the adequate theoretical construct, adequate theoretical knowledge at the same time different skill oriented practices, different skill oriented courses okay means the teachers will develop the skills which is required in the teaching learning process because they have to practice it, they have to use it uh, 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 at, at real teaching when they will be teacher. So friends. Uh, this course BES 1 to 2 Contemporary India and Education will provide you a detailed context and perspectives of education. That means what is the philosophical uh, perspective of education, what is the historical perspective of education. So you will get uh, a detailed overview uh, uh, you know, of such concept uh, from this course because without understanding the theory, without developing, without developing the theoretical construct, it is, it is very difficult to implement it. It is very difficult to understand pedagogy also. So friends, this course uh, will give you a detailed overview, detailed understanding about the uh, philosophical context and perspectives to understand education, sociological context and perspectives to understand education, at the same time historical context and perspectives to understand education. Because without knowing our history, without knowing the chronology of the development of education as a discipline, education uh, uh, as a, uh, you can say as a teacher education program then it is, it is, it is not uh, uh, you know possible to acquire the skills and uh, to acquaint yourself uh, you can say uh, uh, in teacher education programs and to be a good teacher. So friends let us try to understand first what are the different objectives 
that has been addressed uh, in this course. First of all, to understand the social realities of Indian society and its impact on education. So friends, we, we, we consider that we, we are the part and parcel of this uh, society and uh, you can say uh, without society we cannot live isolated, we cannot uh, 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 live in isolation. So that's why the social norms, the social standards, okay, the, the social uh, interactions, our dealing with the society, our dealing with the community and the knowledge based the experiences that we gain from the family, from the society, from the community, okay, that also uh, uh, the children that uh, they should understand first. So here you will find that this course will provide you a detailed social realities. First of all, they will understand the Indian society, okay, Indian society, the perception of the Indian society, what the citizen of this country, uh, what are the, what are their language practices, uh, what are the different diversities they practice uh, uh, in their life, their culture, okay, so their way of living, everything uh, will be discussed so that, so that it will prepare the mind of the teachers, they will first understand the society because whatever we do, it may be in teacher education program or it may be in any program, this is because of for the society because, because whatever experience, whatever knowledge that we will gain, further we have to work, we have to implement it in the society. This is for the beneficiary of the society. So friends, here this course will provide you a detailed social, uh, you can say uh, uh, social understanding that uh, the nature of the society, the practices of the society and the impact on education, how the social practices impact upon education. So that is one of the major objective of this course. Then the second objective that uh, uh, you will study that is to understand the issues relating to diversity, inequality and marginalization in Indian society and its implications for education. So friends, uh, I have already said that uh, uh, India is a huge country, we have a huge country and if you if you'll visit different places, different region of this country, you will find that the practices of the people are different. They are using multi-language, okay, in different states, you will find that uh, the languages they are uh, using, that is, that is, that is huge, uh, that is different language they are using, culture is also different, okay, and the way of living is also different. So many diversities in terms of language, in terms of culture, in terms of social practices, okay, you will find it is different. So that's why and uh, you will also find that uh, uh, when we talk about society, uh, the different social groups, different social groups from diverse societies you will find as a teacher, uh, uh, you will come contact with that group of students. Those are coming from a multilingual background, those are coming from a diverse background societies, those are coming from a marginalization section of the society, how to deal them, how to understand them and, and, and in an inclusive setting of the school, how they will acquaint themselves in the system of schooling and as a teacher how you will deal to such group of students in an inclusive setting of the school. So that's why uh, the concept of diversity, the concept of inequality and how to address inequality and how to achieve unity among these diversities. Yes, we always consider that this is, this is the only one country, this is the only country in the world that you will find that huge diversities are there, okay. But, but still then, this is our, we consider all these diversities as our strength, not as our weaknesses, okay. So beautifully what we have done, we have, we have achieved, we have achieved unity in diversities, we work together, okay. We, we respect each other's feeling, we respect each other's ideas and accordingly uh, we developed our country. So friends here, this course will provide you such a sense, such a, such, a, such a type of emotion, such a type of feeling that how to achieve unity among these diversities and, and how to address the marginalizations, margin, marginalization group of society in the teaching learning process and its implications for education. Friends, uh, this is the second objective of this course that when you will go through this course, definitely you will understand that the nature of diversities and how uh, we are successful enough to achieve unity among these diversities. Further, this course will also enable you to understand the concept of social change and social transformation in relation to education. So friends, let me to say that uh, society is not a static, okay, a static concept. You will find that society is an ever dynamic concept, 
every time, every moment, uh, every second, you can say, the society is changing. The rate of society, the changing rate of the society may be slow, but society is ever dynamic, ever changing. So that's why how society is changing. And when, when society is changing, how the people, how the um, citizens of this country, how different section of, of the population of this community, how the community is changing. You will find that how mobility is also taking place in the society, how transformation is taking place in the society. As a teacher, as a student teacher, as a trainee, you might have observed, if you will ask yourself, that how you have engaged yourself during your school days, then what, what are the different things that you have observed when you are growing up, when you are growing up, okay? So you will find that how the society is changing, okay? And how mobility is taking place in the society. The mobility is taking place, you can say vertically, you can say horizontally from one strata to another strata, from one standard to another standard, okay? The per capita income of the people, the education standard of the people, uh, the ideas of the people, you can say, the living standard, living style of the people, that is also day by day you will find that it is changing. A transformation, a positive transformation is happening in the sphere of education. So that's why, friends, this course will provide you an understanding to know about how the society is changing and how mobility is taking place. Then further, this course will also provide you an understanding to understand the concept and aim of education. So friends, when we talk about aim of education, concept of education, uh, you, can, you can't say that only there is the individual aim of education. Yes, there is the, definitely there is the individual aim of education. We try to, we try to, or every individual, every citizen of this com country should be, should be self-centered. And how education empower the students, uh, the citizen of this country to be self-centered. At the same time, what is your social aim of education? What is the democratic aim of education? How to achieve national integration? How to achieve international understanding? How to achieve universal brotherhood? Okay, emotional integration. So friends, these are the certain broader objective. These are the certain broader objective. And this course will uh, acquaint yourself to understand the aims of education and further how to implement, how to practice those aims of education and how to transmit those aims of education when the trainee teachers will be a full-fledged teacher and when they will teach the students how they will develop such aim of education among the young generation, among the students, among the students in the school. Then further another objective is to comprehend different values ancient in the constitution of India and its impact on education. So friends, we are living in a democratic country. Okay, we, we give respect to others. We, we acquire many democratic values, we acquire values that has been uh, included in our democracy. That is the philosophy of our democracy. It teaches us equality, it teaches us equity, it teaches us quality, it teaches us fraternity, it teaches us, it teaches us liberty. So how to practice the value of liberty, the value of fraternity, the value of equality, the value of equity. So friends, this course will, will acquaint yourself how to, how to develop those values and how to practice those values also. What are the different methods, what are the different techniques, different strategies you have to follow to teach the students for practicing these values, for transforming, uh, you know, personality of the students. Further, let us go forward. The other objective of this course is to identify the contemporary issues in education and its educational implications. So what are the different contemporary issues? What are the issues we are facing, okay? It may be in the pedagogy, it may be in our universal living, it may be in our group living, in our community living. So that's why this is also another important aspect that what are the different developments which is going on uh, in the sphere of education and also in other sphere and how to practice those developments in the teaching learning process. Then this course will also help you to understand the historical development and policy frameworks for public education in India. So friends, let me to say that without knowing the history, I was talking you earlier that this course will provide you a detailed context and perspective of, uh, a detailed historical uh, perspective of education, to understand education in historical perspective, how education has been developed in this country. So that's why this course will also provide you a detailed policy frameworks and detailed developments 
uh, of education, how it has taken place starting from very ancient system of education, then at this modern age, at this modern time, or latest we can say that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to reach at NEP 2020, National Education Policy 2020. So you will find the developments so far as the recommendation of different committees, different commissions, and uh, uh, different policies is concerned that we have uh, uh, that has been di discussed in this course. This is also one of the important objective. Then further to get acquainted with the current development in universalizing uh, secondary education in India. So what are the current development to universalize secondary education in this country? How how uh, uh, how to engage students? How to uh, you can say increase how to increase the gross enrollment ratio? Uh, as per NEP 2020 from 26 percent to 50 percent that is also another important aspect of this course. Yes, we have we have the elementary, uh, we have already implemented the right to education act, RT act 2009 that has been implemented from 1st April 2010 that is one of the fundamental right to provide free and compulsory elementary education that is from class 1 to 8 to each and every citizen of this country. This is the responsibility. Uh, uh, of the country now, this is the responsibility of the state now. But but how to uh, you know further universalize the secondary education? Secondary education, not only the elementary education. This is also another important aspect, another important objective of this course. So friends, keeping in consideration of all these objectives, this course has been developed. And very quickly, let me to say that how the program has been transacted. We have developed a very good self-learning material which is available in eGyan course at the same time in Igno students app and you will also get you will also get the hard copy of the material from MPDD. So for program transaction we have developed a, for the first time for the first time in India as per the NCTE regulation 2014 we have developed a very good curriculum very good course content. Then there will be the induction meeting at your study center then academic counseling of every courses in the study center then regular TC teleconferencing and interactive radio counseling sessions will be conducted that is in Ganderson TV as well as in FM radio and regular Facebook live session also will be conducted on different component of this program on different topic of this program on different courses of this program. At the same time you will also get the audio video programs which is available which is available in eGyan course and all these audio video programs are in the YouTube platform you can also use this. Then as I was telling that this is the combination of theory as well as practical oriented courses. So two workshop based activities you have to uh, done. So that is also one of the part of this program. Then for the internship one and two is also another compulsory component of this program and for evaluation assignment and term and examination will be done 30 percent weightage is given to assignment and 30 percent 70 percent weightage is given for the term and examination. So these are the program transaction methodology that Indira Gandhi National Open University follows and for uh, transacting B.A. program we also follow this methodology being uh, an open and distance learning program. Then further let us to uh, discuss about the evaluation system I have already said that both continuous assessment as well as term and, uh, uh, term and examination is the two uh, component of your uh, of the evaluation system of different courses of B.A. program. 30 percent weightage is given to the compulsory assignment course wise assignment and 70 percent weightage is given to the term and examination. And a minimum D grade is required to pass in a component that means to pass in uh, assignment component of a course or uh, a uh, uh, you can say term and examination component of a course. But for combining the assignment and term and examination at least you have to earn a C grade to successfully completion of the course. Okay, the combined grade will be C in each and every course to complete for successful completion of that course. And IGNU practices a five point grading system that is the letter grade is A to E. Let us have a focus upon this grade A, B, C, D and E. A is the highest grade and E is the lowest grade. Okay. And the minimum completion of a course including the assignment, term and examination will be C. That means at least 50 percent you have to acquire at least you have to earn a C grade okay but individual in assignment if you have earned a D grade you are pass in assignment or you have earned in D grade in term and examination you are also pass in the term and examination but uh, in combination of these two at least you have to earn a C grade then further 
friends uh, for further queries you can write me uh, a mail that is uh, at niradhar.ignu.se.in and you can also make me a telephone call uh, in this number 011-2957-2994 my intercom is 2994 and you can you can go through my facebook page you will find many videos keep, uh, in education themes in your uh, uh, different um, uh, B.Ed courses and uh, if you visit my you can also visit my YouTube, YouTube channel you will also get many videos on education themes and teacher education at the same time in different uh, uh, other education themes also. In our second program we will discuss about different uh, 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 your different blocks and different units what are the concept what are the content point that has been included in different blocks and different units. So thank you friends, uh, we will meet after few minutes uh, for the second program, thank you.